Mexico says the market may be reassured by Yellen placating Xi, but investors should prepare for rising tensions. For more here, let's bring in Derek Scissors, senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Derek, thanks for being with us. Um, you're skeptical of this trip. You say that the U.S. does need to maintain communication, but, and I'm reading from your notes here, the U.S. doesn't need two trips in nine months by the Treasury Secretary. Why do you take that view? Yeah. Well, I mean, what has happened in the last nine months that the U.S. and China need to have face-to-face -face talks with the same person over? Um, nothing is the quick answer to that question. Secretary Yellen would say we need to talk about overcapacity. Overcapacity is a 20-year issue in China. Uh, there's nothing the U.S. is going to say to them that they don't already know. And, you know, adding to that, overcapacity is really an issue for the Secretary of Commerce and the United States Trade Representative. When Secretary Yellen says all trade remedies are on the table, she's not in charge of trade remedies. That is not the real reason for her visit. So who should be there then? Or anyone at all? Secretary Rem oh, I, I mean, if, if we really are, are, are concerned about a flood of Chinese goods in certain sectors and we are, feel obliged to take actions that we would prefer to avoid because we would prefer to avoid the flood of goods, Secretary Raimondo and USTR Tai are the people in charge of those measures and in charge of that issue. And they're not going there because of the reasons you mentioned in your report. Secretary Yellen is very popular in China, yeah. but her popularity in China is not a good reason for a visit. So then what would success look like, Derek? Is this just sort of to keep the peace, or do you think that there's actual concessions to be won from China? Oh, there are definitely no concessions right. to be won. And in fact, Treasury was saying, saying that beforehand. Again, the Chinese system lends itself to overcapacity. They announce strategic sectors that get government support. You never hit market demand when you do that. You're always going to overshoot. So a visit by a U.S. Uh, cabinet official saying this is a problem, that's not going to do anything. The way you would have had success is to say, look, we don't want to take these corrective measures, but if you continue with overproduction in, in EVs or whatever, what have you, we're going to put new tariffs and quotas on. It's not to have it set up a dialogue to mm. talk about it. This issue has been beaten into the ground. We don't need to talk anymore. Well, how do we know that's not happening behind the scenes? Because it feels like the broader point here is stabilization, right? You can't afford to have a more aggressive China, a more aggressive President Xi Jinping. So do you have to maintain sort of the status quo? And what's the actual threat you think that China does become more aggressive and moves on a region like Taiwan? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to make an argument that we have to be nice to Xi Jinping all the time because otherwise his behavior will be worse, uh, that could be true. That, that's, that's fine. And then we send somebody who's a friend of China to try to placate him. Uh, but it won't last. And this would be my warning to the market. Um, your report stated this very well. Secretary Yellen is very respected in China. She's also going to turn 78 this year. And if President Biden wins re-election, she will not be the Secretary of the Treasury. We're going to lose the people of her age who remember a period of U.S.-China cooperation, and we're going to get younger people who see Xi Jinping as aggressive. Mm. So perhaps this is the right thing to do for the next six months, but it will not work in 2025 because we're not going to have another Secretary Yellen to make these visits and try to calm everyone down. Is that what you mean when you say investors should prepare for rising tension? You don't see anyone else coming up in the pipeline who can be as popular? Yes. I mean, you, you have a situation where Secretary Yellen has had a long and respected career, and she's very friendly to China. Um, and, you know, that is a rare thing now. Younger people tend to remember more of Xi Jinping and less of the days of, of, of stronger U.S.-China cooperation. So even if President Biden wins, she's not going to be Treasury Secretary in yeah. 2025. And certainly if President Trump wins, she isn't. So we're going to get somebody who is very different from Secretary Yellen and not able to make these kinds of trips to try to keep the relationship under control. Derek, thanks for your insights. Derek Scissors. Thank you.